so honored to have a hero of ours, Dr. Temple Grandin, here with us today. She wanted to say a few words. She's been talking all day and signing all day, so we're going to keep this brief, but she's, you've got to be exhausted. Well, I got the coughing fit in the middle of my oh. video, which I'll go edit out. That was part of the charm. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. Oh, I think it's great what you're doing, and I, the reason you're good at what you do is to get attention to detail. And the problem with the normal brain is it overgeneralizes. I'm constantly fighting overgeneralization. People ask me, well, what do I do about someone with autism? How do I deal with the dog behavior problem? Whatever it is. They will tend to overgeneralize. And I find I'm troubleshooting lots of different things. You've got to have a lot more information. You see, the autistic mind like sees the details. The regular mind, uh, too much top down, too much overgeneralization. And one of the things I talked about in my talk this morning is what would happen to Einstein today? He had no speech until age three. He'd probably be autistic. How about Thomas Edison? He was described as an adult, hyperactive high school dropout. He was probably in the autism spectrum. Steve Jobs was kind of weird. He was a weird loner who brought snakes to school and uh, got bullied in, uh, in high school in a really bad way. You know, there's a lot of people that are different that have done a lot of really great things. And uh, you're showing them out there with Bose and the other companies you're working with. You can do it better than anybody else can. That's the thing to do. Yay! Because the thing I learned in the work I did in the cattle industry, I learned to sell my work. Make myself the best of the best in the industry. I also had to deal with uh, discrimination against being a woman in a man's industry. But I learned to sell my work. I never talked about autism. I would just put the portfolio out there. My drawings, my pictures, references. Show off the work. You prove yourself by doing the best work. I just understand that for one client, you are better than a Fortune 500 company. Well, that's just great. That's what you need to do. Prove that you can be the best. Maybe, maybe there'll be some questions. I have a question. I have okay. a request. Can you repeat just briefly your message about doing things from a young age. We need to get kids from a young age out doing things. You're working on screens now, but I'm seeing too many young kids getting addicted to video games, and I've got a book called Calling All Minds, where we get kids out making things. Now, a lot of those are my childhood projects, uh, airplane kites and things like this, and going back and duplicating those as an adult was not that easy because I couldn't get exactly the same materials. And the thing is, when I was a kid with a lot of little things I made, especially my aviation experiments, I had to tinker and tinker and tinker to get them to work. And a lot of kids today are afraid to make mistakes. See, the thing about making actual practical stuff is you're going to make mistakes. Then you figure out how to correct the mistakes and have the perseverance to correct them. So that's why I did the Calling All Minds book. Uh, I just wanted to ask, really my first introduction to you was the movie, the HBO yeah. movie, and I just wanted to ask, what was your experience like with that? Well, it was uh, really kind of weird that being in the movie, was seeing the movie was like the 60, 70 time machine. They showed mm -hmm. my visual thinking accurately. They showed all my projects I did accurately. Yeah, there's some stuff they had to change around, but the important stuff, the main characters, visual thinking, and the things I designed are accurate. My actual drawings are in the movie. And I really like that because I am what I do. I get satisfaction in life by being good at what I do. Now, this stage of my career, I'm 70, almost 71 now, is get satisfaction out of helping other people to be the best at what they do. Let's get some other questions here, right there? Yeah, so I was, I was at your talk earlier, and I know you talked about uh, that work experience is important, which I agree because um, as uh, that the educational system and the work world like are not, I don't think they mesh well. They're they're different. They oh, academic different. skills are kind of a different set of skills yeah. than work skills. Yeah. So, but I know. So you were. My thing is, 
uh, you were talking about like getting work even from like at a, starting at like 11 years old. Uh, my experience growing up, I was born in 1990, is that the the work world has changed from when you were like those ages. That it's it's very harder. It's all, we have the to figure out. We well, have to up, figure so. out how to yeah. do it now. I would suggest now today for jobs that 11, 12 year olds. Okay, what do we do to replace the paper route? I know that's gone. Dog walking for the next door neighbors. Set it up in the neighborhood. I think it's very important to learn to do tasks on a schedule outside the home. Volunteer jobs at church, synagogue, community center, farmer's market, a um, whole lot of volunteer jobs. But learning how to do that task on a schedule. You've got to walk Mr. Jones's dog every day at 6 o'clock, rain or shine. It's a job. And a quality 20-minute walk. Don't be, don't skimp on the length of time of the walk. <laughs> you see, that is doing the job. And with littler kids with chores, there's a tendency lots of times when a kid gets a label to have the parents do too much for them. I'm seeing too many kids today that, that don't know how to do life skills, like shopping. That's stuff I was doing when I was very, very young. Yeah, and I, I yeah, I definitely think there, there definitely is a lot that, um, it doesn't stuff doesn't happen as much. Um, we have that, to make it happen. As it used to, and yeah, no, it does. Yeah, it just has to be. You just have yeah. to make it. We have to like focus on it. Yeah. We don't have paper routes anymore. But let's find something to substitute for paper route. Yeah. And the reason I like dog walking is it's not seasonal. Things like shuffling snow and mowing lawns is seasonal. Where dog walking, you've got to do it year round, just like paper route. And I think you're oversimplifying about video games. I mean. One thing you say that it teaches you that you have to fail in order to succeed eventually, and that's something they teach you because uh, a lot of them are very hard. And also, I, I come up with ideas while playing them. Some of those ideas were wrong, but I still think about things like that. Uh, you know, and, you know, I don't immediately give up uh, because of an occasional failure. And, well, the thing about the video game thing is, you know, in moderation, it's fine. But you've got some kids playing video games for 10 hours a day, and they're not doing anything else. You know, it's like a lot of things. Moderation is fine. But what I'm seeing, I'm kind of seeing with a lot of kids that get an autism label, is the ones that learn how to work are going out and doing really well, and then you get others who are ending up in the basement playing video games on a social security check. That's not where I want them to go. You can play them in moderation, fine. But there's some people that, that have a very difficult time playing them in moderation, and they're not having good outcomes. Okay, right there. On a personal level, are there any stories you can share that have motivated you in life? Well, I was, uh, I had a very good science teacher. I was not a good student in school, and my science teacher gave me projects that got me really interested in science. You saw the optical illusion room in the HBO movie, and that's in Calling All Minds. I actually had to figure out how to make that optical illusion room work. My mother, when I was young, was always pushing me to do new things, always stretching me, giving me some choices, but stretching me. When I was 15, I was afraid to go out to my aunt's ranch. That's where I got introduced to the cattle industry. And she gave me a choice, one week or all summer. Not going was one of the choices. <laughs> because if you don't stretch, you don't develop. Now, on the other hand, jobs with tons of hectic multitasking, like a McDonald's lunch rush, that'd be a bad choice. Mm. You can't load the working memory. You know, although we have a whole lot of hectic uh, multitasking. The other things I found when I was doing projects is I wanted to get very clear what exactly the client wanted. Or if there's a job that involves sequence, step one, step two, step three, Give me kind of a pilot's checklist so I don't have to remember the sequence. Uh, you mentioned earlier about how like kids have to go out and do stuff, and you like specify like more physical, tangible things. But I think programming is a pretty good fit for that as well. Well, no, programming is, you see, but the kids that are getting addicted to video games aren't learning programming. If they were learning programming, they were actually learning how to make video games and go into the video industry. I wouldn't be criticizing it. But they're not learning any programming. No, I think it's fine to learn programming because that you can, people will pay you to do programming. <laughs> That's fine. It, and what I've noticed on the video game thing 
the old video games, the people that played Pong and those ancient old Space Invaders and the old games, those people would go on into programming because those old games, the computer showed its guts off. Because they'd break and then they'd see all the code. But that's not happening now with the modern video games. The computers do not show their guts anymore. And these kids are not going into programming. That's the reason why I'm so criti critical of it. Because the outcomes are bad. What you mean, but I was going to uh, go into more detail about. I think in the past couple of years, especially, people have been encouraging. People have been starting to teach coding to to kids. Yeah, I think it's like, probably a good idea. Like, there's a building right nearby, like within walking yeah. distance, that does coding yeah. classes for kids. Well, the other thing is, let's bring the coding back to the real world. I went to an SIS conference, and they had that Spiro ball. I actually did a little programming with that. I did pretty good, except I left out the last step. Um, but the thing I liked about the Spiro for kids is that you're, the coding is making an actual physical thing do something. That's getting it back, back to the real world. You know, you're making you do the coding. I'm talking about little kids here. Um, the other thing you've got to learn in coding is you've got to write code on assignment. You've got to write code that for Bose or for whoever your client is. It, it's, uh, you've got to learn how to do tasks on assignment that other people want. Okay, a company like Google, I think, allows 15% of the time do whatever you want, but the rest of the time, you've got to do the work they assign. You see, and that's a work skill. Now, I've talked about the different kinds of minds, like the visual thinkers like me, photorealistic visual thinkers. We're going to be on the mechanical. I'm going to be on the mechanical side of things. And then the more mathematically inclined people are going to do the coding. And as I mentioned this morning about the iPhone, Steve Jobs was an artist. He made an interface that was easy to use. The more mathematically inclined engineers and coders had to make that phone actually work. That's the two kinds of minds working together on things. So the kids that turn out to be little math geniuses, let's introduce them to coding. But right from the start, they got to start learning how to do coding that does something. Something on assignment. And the thing that, that bothers me is that some of these kids that are in the basement playing video games, well they should be working here, or maybe they ought to be working for Amazon or Google or Apple and they're in the basement playing video games instead of going where they should have been going. Because I've been out to these tech companies. You know what? This looks like Silicon Valley. You're the same people here. <laughs> it's the same people. I've been, to, I've been to Silicon Valley. The only difference between here and, and uh, it, it's, it's the same exact people. You go out there, they just don't have a diagnosis. They're the same nerds. <laughs> they got the same decorations in the office, like TARDIS and stuff like that. That's like, you know, Stormtrooper, whatever it thinks you've seen here. I have a cousin that works in Silicon Valley. So it's the same people. Yeah. I've been there. <laughs> I've been to the tech companies. I've yeah. seen them. Actually, I guess my cousin is the only... Well, you almost have to be on the spectrum to be a good programmer. Yeah. But you need both kinds of minds. That's why the iPhone is such a great product, because the two kinds of minds work together. They may not have realized it, but the two kinds of minds work together on that. And that's why that phone's simple to use. Uh, actually, my friend wants to ask you a question. Oh, yeah, I was wondering, um, you know, like, yeah, some of these uh, people, like, these people you're talking about, um, maybe, like, like bioinformatics stuff, coding for coding for like, yeah, biotechnology companies and stuff like for yeah, or organizations. You know, make it maybe like yeah, is there a way to get more um, people like on the autism spectrum writing codes, developing like bioinformatics software? Well, the first of all, with any profession, students get interested in stuff they get exposed to. Now the thing I'm finding in terms of advising students, what industry really likes is mixtures of majors. Computer science mixed up with engineering, maybe with some biology, 
They like these mixtures. You know, like SpaceX, for example, they like uh, computer science, electrical engineering, a dash of mechanical, and some physics all mixed together in a bachelor's. Love ya. Hire you instantly. Work your butt off. That's basically what I got on my master's. Okay. But they like these mixtures where you can go across disciplines. I'm concerned about majors that are too narrow. That's not what's going to be good in the workplace today. Yeah, my, my master, my graduate coursework combines like um, biochemistry, microbiology, statistics, information technology, computer science, and a little bit of business management. Well, that's a good mix. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Brandon, let's take two okay. more. Okay, all right. Um, I think we had Paul and Lauren. Now we have two. All right, here, let's take these. We can take four more. Okay, I'm okay, fine. Right um, there. Uh, me? Yeah. Um, so, you, you know, it's. Um, I, I think one of the things I think about because I, I feel like, um, you know, I'm actually new to the diagnosis, so I, I feel like I have a. You just look like regular Silicon Valley geek. Uh, <laughs> I do or don't. Well, that's also a diagnosis. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm wondering because it's, it's something. It's like it's something I'm new to, but it's something that I kind of knew is like and explained a lot of things. Like, oh, okay. Um, but I have largely experience a neurotypical life as I've come to call it um, and you know it's it's one of those things that I see it's like um, you know well, you see, well, autism is a true continuum well no no right right I'm, I'm just and, I'm, and uh, basically let me explain to you what happens in the brain in autism this is brand new research the same genetics that makes human beings have a gigantic huge cortex is the same genetics that causes schizophrenia and autism also epilepsy and basically what happens is in autism, you grow extra circuits in the back of the brain, maybe in the math department, the music department, the art department, and you shortchange the social stuff. You also shortchange some of the multitasking stuff. In schizophrenia, what happens is you don't grow quite enough, of, uh, you don't grow enough, a dense enough network. And then in late adolescence, when the system does synaptic pruning and trim back the bushes, trims back too much and the network starts to fail. Okay. Um, and so one is too much neuronal growth early, and the other one's not enough neuronal growth. Um, no, I was going to find my own way to segue into it, but I wanted to get onto the social aspect. But I, th I think okay. that 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 information is actually was well, something I wasn't aware of, and is kind of interesting. So, you know, it, it's all like this tech stuff that you know uh, people on the spectrum tend to get, for for lack of a better word, shoehorned into, but. Um, you know, I'm thinking, you know, as far as like real tangible career paths, like what would you say um, about like, you know, more socially oriented jobs and stuff like that? Um, Depends it's upon just the always something There's I'm a lot of people on the spectrum that are very good retail sales, extremely knowledgeable on, a, on specialized subjects such as cars. I've heard about three cases where teenagers that couldn't drive were going into car dealerships and just start selling cars. Because they had a tremendous knowledge of cars, and and the social interaction you do for sales is kind of a simple uh, social interaction. Uh, you see, autism—it's a true spectrum. One that's a little bit nerdy become autism. It, it's an absolute true spectrum. And the other problem that you got is at one end of the spectrum you've got Einstein, at the other end of the spectrum you have somebody with epilepsy who can't dress themselves. And they've all got the same name. And then the top-down verbal thinkers overgeneralize. But I'm seeing stuff I don't want to see, like a smart kid uh, that ought to be learning computer programming in with people that can't uh, dress themselves. Yeah. You see, I that's totally wait, wait. bad. Paul has tried to ask the okay, question. Let's, okay, let's get this. Um, I've actually been meaning to ask you, I, forgive me if I'm ignorant of your, of your work on this, but has it been difficult to inform people that there's no link between autism and vaccines? I don't even discuss that. <laughs> <laughs> here at Aspiritech, but um, if I were to go to an, on to another job, uh, do you think that would stigmatize me because... You know what the best thing to do? Sell your work. Just sell your work. Put your portfolio out. This is what I did. 
Yeah, but what if they know that I have autism already? Well, do you think that their opinion might change it? Unfortunately, me? sometimes that's the case. That's why the emphasis has to be on showing off the portfolio of work. Show off the work. This is what I can do. And here's my portfolio. And when I did um, interviews to get cattle jobs, I would just lay the drawings out on the table, put the pictures out there, my brochure out there. All right, now it's coding. You can say, here's some code I wrote for this, and it does this. And you'd have it on an iPad, make sure it's charged. And it doesn't have a really weird Area 51 stickers all over <laughs> it. I'm a little professionalism. All right, this is what I can do. I know this program, C++, Python, whatever. This is what kind of work I know how to do. Just lay the work out. All right. Sell the work. That is something I learned. Mm -hmm. All right. and, and, and you need More. to, what you want to do when you show off your portfolio is a 30 second wow. Where you can put something out there and they look at maybe this much code on the screen and go, oh wow, that's nice. Yeah. It's the kind no, of stuff you want. No one you wanted to ask. Country. Okay, and the, there was a question here. No, 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 no. Okay. Lauren. Okay. Lauren. All right. Um, I just, Something that's always bothered me has um, <coughs> has been that where the overgeneralization kind of goes in the other direction, where people think, oh, because you're very smart, because you have these skills, that you uh, must be good at everything, that you don't need help with things. And one of the hardest things for me has been convincing people as they get more and more impressed with whatever I whatever I'm impressing them with. I don't really know. But they'll think that that means that the problems that they've seen no longer exist. And how can people make sure that they get the accommodations they need? First of all, I need to talk specifically places. about accommodations. You see, you're asking a question that's almost too vague. And, and uh, you know, let's look at some of the common problems. I mean, a lot of kids today, I mean, they aren't learning, you know, budgeting skills, for example. That was something that was taught to me at a very, very young age. That was something that was done in the 50s with all children. So tell me something specific where you have a problem. Uh, time management. Time management. I'm... Okay, now let's discuss time management. One of the things I did when I was in college, since I was a visual thinker, I had big calendars and I put them on the wall. And I'd mark down when the term papers were due so I could plan out studying. I, I never pulled an all-nighter before test. I never did that. So when you say time management, where do you have a time management problem? Let's break this down and see where you have a problem. Where's the problem? The problem is that up until a point, I can manage time, uh, but when it comes to Okay, I'm getting too specific now because I'm... I'm, I'm trying to I'm, figure I'm out where your time management problem I'm, is. Is it getting to work in the morning? Yeah. Is oh, it no. getting it's your work done? Deciding what to do at any given time. Organizing the thoughts because there's so many different things that need to happen. Okay, so the problem is we, the prior, pri, making a priority for the different work. I was talking to another guy in another tech company and I discussed you need to have four categories of priority from, you know, not important at all to super important. Mm -hmm. And some things are more important than other things. Now, for me to help you with that, I'd have to start learning more specifically about what you actually do. Well, I, I, I kind of, you see, then I could help you make yeah. a priority for your work. She's the lead now. What? I don't know what I, neat is. I'm lead. 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 She's a man. Lead a project yeah. of a team. I, I manage a team of like eight people now because I'm good at my job. You're managing some people so you have problems on on what projects to put them on in, in terms of what priority? The, the more people I, I'm managing, the more jobs I have to do and the more jobs I have to make sure they know how to do. I'll tell you what building contractors do. I'll also tell you what they do on the movie site. They put great big charts up on the wall, and they still do that. Now, maybe they might put them in the computer, too, but they put big charts up 
where they can see like a four month period. They did this for the movie about what, you know, what they were going to do on different days and charted it all out. And it was done on the wall in paper. Marika does that. You, you might, you know, find that would help you. I, I went to Pixar about three years ago and they were still storyboarding on the wall in the hallway in paper. Yes. Big long strips of stuff. And it might help you to lay it out visually. So you can kind of, uh, okay, what do we have to get done? Okay, we got certain, how many clients are in there? Just the one. Just the one. Okay. All right. Now, you got the one client, and then they've got various projects. And there's probably some deadlines for these different projects. Then you mark those on those calendars. I'd put them, you know, monthly. I like a calendar where I can see the whole month. I have a calendar that I keep by hand because I want to see the entire month. I hate a calendar where it's uh, sequential days. I hate those. I want to see the entire month. And if I was in your job, I would just stick these calendars up on the wall. And I would mark in there when different stuff had to get done. And chart it out. Building contractors actually do that. They might do it on the computer, but it's the same thing. Computers, you look at the calendar and it's like, there's no view that looks good. What you have to start figuring out is priority. You've got stuff with hard deadlines and where this, they're going to be really mad if this piece of work's not done by this date and you mark that in red. Yeah, I, I wish, I wish most of it was deadlines. Most of it is like random things, like things I want to do to improve the work. Things I want to do to make sure to streamline things. You know, I, this is the sort of thing that, you know, I'd have, to, you know, I'd have to sit down and, yeah. I know a lot about industry, so sit down and sort of figure out what things might be higher priority and start marking them out. The other thing is, I learned, okay, if I have a block of time on a weekend, that's when I want to get a book chapter roughed out. Because if I dink around I'm doing a lot of little dinky stuff, I'm, I won't ever get that book chapter roughed out. There's certain things where you need a large block of time undisturbed to do it. And then there's other things like answering correspondence and stuff like that that you can do that, you know, five minutes here, five minutes there. So I start thinking about what are the big things where you can kind of improve something from the little things. But you see, I'm a visual thinker, so I would I want to see it on a calendar. Okay, how about right there? Um, just, Sarah, yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, sorry. Uh, how hard was it to actually sell your work? Actually, I found selling the work was much easier than getting people to operate the systems correctly. Because <laughs> what I've learned is people want the thing, the magical new thing that's going to solve all their problems. They want that more than the manager, which is a whole lot of attention to detail on how to sell things. I was just in the car and we were discussing problems at the, in the meat industry where people don't maintain equipment. You see, that's the management side of things. People want the thing. Okay, we're going to put in this magic computer system that's going to fix all your problems. Well, it's not going to fix on all the management problems this company might have. Mm -hmm. And basically, I sold jobs in my portfolio. Another thing I did is I wrote up, I wrote articles. There's a scene in the movie where I went up and I got the editor's card. And I started writing about my projects. Okay. You know, and I suggested on the Spirit Tech, you're doing a lot of good things here. Write about it. Blogs. Write in computer industry magazines. You know, in your different trade magazines, whatever they are. Um, write up in some professional journals. Because my sister has a talent for designing ships and she wants to make them hybrid. So she's trying, I want to know so I can help her figure out how to sell her work to... I mean, design, design ships to sail, sailing like like uh, like uh, cargo vessels or... Uh, big ships like that, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's what she wants to design, the big ships. Okay. Design the big ships? Like the cruise ships. Maybe she needs to get a job for a shipbuilding company. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. She... That's the first thing, you got to get in the door. And yeah. then a lot of companies, once you get in the door, you can migrate all around in the companies. There's people in the movie industry that literally start out in the mail room. Yeah. Not kidding. Wow. 
And then they met the right person and they could migrate around the company. The first thing they do is get a job for a company that builds ships. Okay. She may have to go to another country to do that. Uh, they could find a way. So, I think I John is last. I, I want to say because something uh, that I want uh, Dr. Grandin to hear. There were three parents that came to me after the meeting to tell me the impact of their children and what a major difference it made in their life. I want you all to know it. There was also one of the people that volunteered to help us with the marketing that uh, reached an old company and they want to give us, you know, like more consistent work. So that's what Good. happened in the meeting. I want you all to know that and I want you to hear. Well, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. um, you. I just want to just say one thing because we're going to get to John. Yeah. Because we have to get Temple Grand in some lunch and to the airport. She's on a tight time frame. Well, actually, a plane is like a. Well, oh, okay. it's a 7.44. Okay. <laughs> so, that, that um, okay. One thing that I just wanted to say was that, well, autism really is a massive spectrum, and it's kind of a, it's kind of a little bit ridiculous to say that, oh, someone like me who has autism is just like uh, how one of my cousins also has autism. However, she has it much worse than I do, where she's like 25, but still is like ba barely is able to speak, and well, she won't ever be able to live on her own and needs help from her family. Well, this is the problem. Autism is this, you've got the same name it's, it's on this huge, huge spectrum. Thing. Now, the fact that I'm a visual thinker, I don't pay that much attention to the you know, to the name, I said, oh, you look like somebody got to go work for Google or whatever. <laughs> I, it, I I, look at the person, and and uh, let's look at the work, what they can do. Mm -hmm. And when I, I worked with skilled tradespeople, because after I uh, designed that job, I'd supervise construction. So this is basically steel and concrete work. Mm -hmm. Also, very, very clever machinery design. And some of these skilled tradespeople I know are dyslexic, ADHD or autistic. And the thing that worries me now, you have a huge shortage of skilled trades because they're playing <clears throat> video games in the basement because schools took out the skilled trades. We've got a huge know-how shortage in this country. And this state's the worst. The bridges are <laughs> yes. falling apart. I, I saw a bridge the other day with this big metal thing holding it up so it wouldn't yeah. fall down, a concrete bridge. Yeah, you've got some of the worst infrastructure in this state in the country. Because as I travel around, I look at that stuff. Can you write a letter to our governor, please? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I saw a bridge that was so horrible, I just couldn't believe it. Yeah, we see it all over. Not having a budget for three years kind of does that. Yeah, we had no budget for two no years. A lot of us lost of us services, too. Which doesn't matter. Wisconsin, they take good care of the bridges. <laughs> I've noticed that. Okay, right there. Oh, no, I think Jake is trying. Okay, Jake, okay. I'll make it quick. So All right, I, really, I really liked what you said at the beginning about, you know, hearing from your mother and her pushing you. She always pushed me. And that's something I really relate to growing up. But yes. What about the people 